string support one operator, the concatenation operator. Uh, concatenation is gluing strings together, and we do that using the plus operator. So we can use plus to join two strings, right? Um, so for example, if we take the first name and the last name from user input, and we want to state my name is first name last name we could use the concatenation operator saying my name is and there's a space here we use plus to glue on first name and then plus a space plus last name we always need to use str to convert numbers to a string before we do any concatenation so for example if we take the age as input and convert that to an integer have the age be an integer we could not uh, concatenate the integer age uh, to a string we need to reconvert the age back to a string using the str function now there's a more practical way of providing output to the user that is using f strings uh, formatted strings in Python so using plus uh, to join two strings is functional but it's an inefficient and this is why we are going to transition to F strings now um, the reasons are the code is going to be long and hard to write correctly because of all the symbols to use if we look at the example below there's quotation marks there's plus symbols there's variables and it's going to be easy to forget things. See, there's conversions as well. Um, so you may fail to format things properly. Uh, I'll put all the spaces and the numbers, uh, they need their own functions uh, to, to be formatted correctly. So additional functions such as rounding and so on and so forth. So we're gonna be able to do all of that using the F strings. So F strings are very simple to use. All you need to do is add the letter F in front of the string and place all of your variables, all the variable names uh, between accolade brackets. So these are not square brackets, but accolade brackets, the ones that are squiggly. So for example, we take the first name to be John, the last name to be Doe, and we want to print my name is John Doe. So we're gonna write my name is, and then we use first name between accolades. We put a space and then last name between accolades. Let's try this example. First name is equal to John. Last name is equal to Doe. And then we print F and we say my name is and then we're going to use the first name and last name so first name space and then we put accolades last name all right and let's try this my name is john doe perfect very easy to format if we compare this to the alternative and you see that this is more complex to write line 13 is more complex than line 12 so we much prefer line 12 the variables inside the string the F string will be accessed and their values will be used to substitute the placeholders between the accolades. Well, actually, the placeholders are the accolades and the variable name. So numbers, they're going to be automatically converted without having to specify the function. And we can even format these numbers, right? So let's say I want to add something about the salary of John Doe right the salary per minute okay so let's take John Doe's salary per minute that's going to be let's imagine he's paid fifty thousand dollars per year for two thousand hours of work which are 60 minutes per hour and so that's his salary per minute I am paid 
and then we're going to write salary per minute. dollars per minute there we go so let's see what that looks like i'm going to clear the console Okay, so we see that he is paid uh, 41 cents and then lots of, of decimals per minute. Okay, well that's not quite a format that's nice to read. So if I want to show this with only two decimal points to know how many cents he's paid per minute, I would write colon point to F. So colon is going to say specify the format. Then I have the point here, which is the decimal point. I have two for two positions after this decimal point and F standing for uh, a floating point value. Um, so there we go. My name is John Doe. I am paid 0.42 per minute. So 42 cents per minute. Great. So I specified the format specifier colon point two f colon stands for we're going to show the format for this point is the decimal point two it indicates that we want to have two digits after the decimal point and f indicates that this variable is of floating point variable type okay so um here's an example we have some code here um What's the money you want to invest? What is the rate? How many periods? Uh, what is going to be the period rate? And then calculate the amount of interest. We want to write a string which is going to display all of the results here. We want to know uh, after the period, uh, what is the interest amount? What is the investment amount? And uh, basically, uh, what was the period for that? And we want to show all of these amounts with two digits after the decimal point, except for the period number. Okay, so we have a program which is similar here. What is it that we need to use as our F string in order to display the results? We want to display the interest amount with two decimal places we want to display the investment amount with two decimal places and we want to display this integer the period number okay so we we are going to use an f string so we started with f and then we say after period and we use the accolades period so this period the interest amount is interest we want to specify that this should be displayed with two decimal places after the uh, decimal point so colon point to f again we specify the format and then after the decimal point two places this is a floating point variable okay and your investment is now amount colon point to f close the accolade period okay let's try this all 
how much money to invest let's say twenty thousand dollars five percent apr and 12 periods so after period one the interest amount is 83 dollars point 33 cents and the investment is now added 83 dollars and 33 cents uh, obviously dollar signs would have been appreciated in this output so we can add them and try again so twenty thousand dollars five percent twelve periods per year the same results but with dollar signs great so by the way uh, Python is a dynamic typing programming language well Python has dynamic typing actually it doesn't really care what types of values you put in variables just variables can hold any type of value uh, it could be a float it could be a string it could be uh, an integer a boolean it doesn't matter um, it's something to note because you're not going to be warned about these changes if this if this is something you were trying to track um, so if you need to verify what the data types are you will need to use special functions for that not all programming lang languages have dynamic typing. Um, some have static typing, um, Java, C++, C. Uh, you actually have to define what the type of the variable is going to be, and that's static typing. So just a word of warning, since we are looking at different data types now. And back to strings. So strings are sequences of characters and each character inside the string has an index. And these indices, they start at zero. So in the string LOL, the first L has index zero, the O has index one, and then the last L has index two. So there are three characters and the highest index is three minus one, two. We can use the index the notation for the index to access specific characters in a string so for instance if i were to print the string hello and specify at index zero then it would only print the h if name is john doe i can access different characters inside john doe using the index again so name zero is j and name four is d so if I count, zero is J, one, two, three is the space, four is D. You can't access an index which is outside of the string. So if there are only seven characters in the string, then you cannot access an index which is uh, at number seven or higher. Let's try running it and see what happens. You see string index out of range. That's what happens if you try to access an index which is outside of the character range. If you try zero, then you get the first letter. Great. Python also supports negative indices. Uh, most programming languages don't, but negative indices are pretty cool because they count from the end of the string. So if you try hello with minus one then you get the last o as an example you can also use the indices to get substrings from a string so i want to get a part of the string i can use the indices for that so i have to provide the start and the end uh, how many characters i want basically the first index will be included in the substring and the last index will not uh, so if I try this, if I have 0, 3, I get H-E-L. If I put 1, 3, I will get E-L. So they are indices, right? The start index and the end index, well, actually the first character to be excluded because the index 3 does not get included. If I look here, 0, 1, 2, 3. 3 was not included in the output. I have a single L, not 2. If three was included, I would have ELL. You can uh, also skip um, the uh, the 
starting index uh, and the ending index to get substrings that start from the beginning and that would end at the end. So let's try that. For example, uh, if I want to get all the letters from the beginning to the index 3, I can skip the beginning index. If I want to start at index 1 all the way to the end, basically just excluding the first letter, E-L-L-O, there we go, get all of that. If I were to skip both indices, well, that's the default, the default uh, string, right? You can also, if you want, use negative indices uh, as these uh, indices, right? So if I write, for instance, 1 and minus 1, I will get everything between the uh, first and last letter, excluding the first and last letter. Now, extracting substrings is uh, pretty useful, and you can even, if you want, change the step length. The step length is um, getting, for example, each character. By default, the step length is one because we get each character. But if we provide a third uh, parameter in our indices, this will define a different step length. So for my hello here, if I wanna get every second letter in this string, I can provide a step length of two. And then I get H, not the E, L, not the second L, and then O, HLO. If I wanna start at the second character, I can do that and I get only E and L to provide a better example A B C D E F G you can see the letters B D F here if I start at 0 I get A C E G and if I change the end A C here A B C excluding D I would step Two. I can even use a negative step. However, if I want to use a negative step, you will need to provide a starting index which is higher than the end index. So just be careful with that. If I step negative two, I get fewer characters. So if I am taking a substring between say characters 0 and 5, by default I get the A, B, C, D, E substring. If I want to reverse that substring, I will get no result except if I provide indices that are reversed 5 and 0. And then as you can see, the first one is included the last one is excluded. If I remove the zero, I get everything. If I want to exclude F, I have to go to four. Try this for yourself. Okay, so for a real application of using the string indices, let's try parsing the value of a year given by a user for a specific event. Specifically, we are going to parse this year into two parts, the century and the decade. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is ask the user to input the event year and store it as a string. So a year is equal to the input of a question. And now uh, we are going to start parsing. And so to parse the century first, what we wish to do is convert the hundreds plus digits to an integer and add one. So what are the hundreds plus digits? These are the digits which are third and more from the right. So the number, let's say 1984, the third from the right would be the nine and then you have the one. So 19 would be the third plus digits from the right. And if we add one, we would get 20. 
if we say the year 312, then the third plus from the right would be the character 3. So that would be in the 4th century. Now for step 3, we're going to take the decade. That would be the second digit from the right. So we use index minus 2. And we add a 0 to get the decade. So the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, etc. So let's give it a try. Year is equal to input. What is the year of the event? And then we are going to start parsing. So a century is equal to year. And now we start parsing. So we're going to say from the start, minus 2. And we are going to add 1 to this, converted to an integer. This would be the century. And now the decade would be equal to year. And we're going to use the index directly, minus 2, and add the string 0. And we're going to print uh, the year, year is in century, century. And decade, decade, period. So uh, just a little bit of explanation. Uh, let's not forget that uh, when we look at a range of indices, the second index is excluded. So here we write year, nothing, minus two. So this states we're going to take everything from the start of that string and go to the second character from the right, but excluding that second character for, from the right. So we're going to the third character from the right. This is why we write minus two, even though the range goes to the third character from the right. And in the case of the decade, we want the actual second character from the right. This is why we again use minus two. So it's important to see the distinction because we are using here the colon as a separator for the uh, start of the range and the end of the range for which the end of the range is always an excluded character so let's give it a try so what is the year of the event 1984 1984 is in century 20 the decade 80 that's very good let's try again year 312 that is in century four, decade 10. The year negative 234, that would be in century minus one, which uh, seems to work, and the decade 30, which seems to work, but uh, clearly more code would be required to complete this program with negative dates or dates BC and so on and so forth. Let's try with a very large year number. So the year um, 12,335, 345 uh, that would be in the century 124 in the decade 40 that seems fair